Welcome to the fascinating world of ancient Egypt, where pharaohs were not your average rulers, but mighty icons of authority and influence. In a land of sand and pyramids, these kings were revered and held in high esteem, yet their eccentricities and strange behaviors have left us with some seriously peculiar and fascinating tales that have endured through the ages. Let's sip on some Nile tea and uncover the ancient Egyptian tales. It all starts with a cat. Cats were always kind of a big deal in ancient Egypt, and I don't mean your everyday awe, that's cute kind of obsession. No, no, no. In the eyes of the ancient Egyptians, harming a cat was considered a serious crime, punishable by severe consequences. Millennia before Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics, the pharaohs seemingly crafted their own set of laws to safeguard these furry animals. One exceptional example of a pharaoh prioritizing the well-being of cats over the welfare of his own people is depicted in the story of Pharaoh Samtik III. During his reign, an extraordinary incident occurred when a rival Persian king named Cambyses II sought to conquer a major Egyptian stronghold, Pelusium. Knowing of the Egyptians' deep affection for cats, Cambyses II devised a cunning strategy, a um, no that was ultimate feline-fueled strategy. His forces gathered as many cats as possible and proceeded to walk toward the front gate of Pelusium, holding the felines in their arms, like furry shields. They also released hundreds of cats into the enemy ranks as they advanced. Faced with an ultimatum from Pharaoh Samtik III, the Egyptian soldiers were forbidden to harm the cats, even in the face of this peculiar and seemingly harmless invasion. Well, guess what? They weren't about to risk being on the wrong side of their fur osseous pharaoh. Under the threat of severe punishment, the Egyptians allowed Cambus's two's men to enter the city unchecked, and the cat-laden Persians didn't waste the opportunity. They clawed their way to victory, celebrating with purr-eyed and dignity. Not really. Cambus's the two's true catitude emerged as he turned pharaoh's defeat into a downright catastrophe. He hurled cats at the retreating Egyptian soldiers, shouting taunts and insults about their gods. This embarrassing defeat at the hands of the Persians, coupled with the demeaning treatment of their beloved cats, served as a humiliating reminder of the consequences of underestimating their adversaries and the significance of their cherished feline companions in the eyes of the pharaohs. Ah, the next. Let me tell you the tale of Pharaoh Akhenaten, the son of Amenhotep III, but oh wait, Akhenaten was named Amenhotep IV at birth, but he changed his name in accordance with his radical monotheistic beliefs. That's something serious. The meaning of his new name, he who is of service to the Aten, honored what he believed to be the one true god, Aten, the sun god. He is mostly known for his attempts to introduce a radical religious shift in ancient Egypt. That's a pharaoh with big dreams and even bigger ideas, strutting around with a sun disc on his head like he's the hippest thing since the Sphinx. Akhenaten was a radical religious zealot who revolted against the Egyptian orthodoxy. He rejected the canonical Egyptian pantheon, led by Amun, the king of the gods, in favor of a kind of monotheism centered on a solar god, Aten, who appeared as the visible sun disc. This shift spurred changes in the nation's art and culture, changes that were reviled by a large contingent of Egyptians. You see, while other pharaohs were into their cool crocodile man and dog-headed grim reaper gods, Akhenaten decided to go rogue and worship a radiant disk of light named Aten. Now I'm all for embracing the uniqueness of religious beliefs, but I guess Aten just didn't have the charm of the other deity dudes and dudettes. Imagine the scene. Akhenaten trying to convince the people that Aten was the coolest super god in town, but folks were like, nah, we'll stick with our tried and true pantheon, thank you very much. And just like that, Aten's party was a total flop. But wait, it gets better. As soon as Akhenaten's son set, aka he passed away, the whole country went into delete mode. It was like the world's first history-erasing party. Anything and everything related to Aten and Akhenaten was wiped out faster than you can say, pyramids. Temples? Destroyed? Artifacts? Smashed to pieces? Cooking pots with Aten's face? Melted down for scrap metal? It was as if Akhenaten never existed, and everyone played along like he was just an awkward phase in Egyptian history. Even the scholars were like, Who's this Akhenaten dude? Never heard of him. Talk about a total wipeout.
It took until the late 19th century for some of Akhenaten's leftover stuff to pop up and for the world to go, oh, he was a real guy after all. In the end, Akhenaten's attempt at religious revolution might have fizzled out, but he left us with a cautionary tale. Never mess with the ancient Egyptian gods, folks. Stick to the classics like Amun-Ra and Osiris, and you'll be just fine. And if you ever see a pharaoh with a sun disc on their head, you know things are about to get wild. Pepe Sekou, known as the longest reigning ruler in history, ruled for approximately 90 years and accomplished many great feats for Egypt, such as constructing pyramids and temples and expanding trade relations. But here's another thing about him. Pharaoh Pepe the Ku had some quirks that made him stand out from the mummy crowd. Sure, he held the scepter and wore the funky headdress, but his true talent lay in stuffing his face with food like there was no pyramid tomorrow. If there was an all-you-can-eat oasis, you bet Pepe was there, chowing down like a camel at a salad bar. But here's an interesting part. Pepe had a feud with flies. Those tiny buzzing troublemakers were like his arch nemeses, always buzzing around, trying to steal a bite of his delicious Egyptian feast. Pharaoh Pepe was like, Oh no, no, not today, my fly friends! To fend off the pesky buzzers, Pepe concocted a wild solution. He appointed a poor soul from his massive entourage to be the honey slave each day. Yep, you heard it right. This unlucky honey-dipped warrior, a.k.a. his servant, would stand there, sticky and sweet, acting like a fly magnet. Flies, thinking they hit the jackpot with an endless honey buffet, would land on the poor guy, only to get stuck like they've stepped into ancient quicksand. Pepe's honey-coated guardian was like a walking fly trap, and soon, every room in the palace had one. It was like an absurd version of Flies Anonymous, where the flies couldn't resist the honey's temptation, and Pepe couldn't stop laughing at their misfortune. Additionally, he had a very weird fascination with dwarves and pygmies, and even sent letters requesting their acquisition. The reason surrounding his fascination remains unknown. While the popular image of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh often depicts a strong, golden-skinned man with a crooked staff and a distinctive headgear, it is essential to acknowledge that Egypt also had female pharaohs. One of the most renowned and successful among them was Hatshepsut, who earned a lasting legacy as a celebrated ruler. Her reign is credited with fostering major trade routes that enriched Egypt with gold and various spices, leading to prosperity. But here's the catch. Being a female pharaoh in ancient Egypt came with its challenges. Everyone, male or female, was supposed to have a beard during fancy ceremonies to show off their pharaonic power. But come on, Hatshepsut couldn't exactly grow a beard even if she tried. So she took matters into her own hands and had these fancy fake beards made. I can only imagine the royal barbershop going, All right, people, time to craft some super stylish top-tier beards for the pharaohs who can't grow one. Hatshepsut wasn't just a fashionista with her fake beard collection. She was smart, too. She knew that some folks might raise eyebrows at a woman ruling the kingdom, a move that was unprecedented for a woman at that time. So she decided to silence the naysayers by having her statues made in a way that showed her with female features but also buff manly muscles and, you guessed it, that pharaonic beard. Talk about making a statement. But her stepson, Thutmose III, who initially resented her authority, later tried to erase her from history after she died. So there you have it, a pharaoh like no other, Hatshepsut, the trailblazing, gold-skinned, beard-rocking Wonder Woman of ancient Egypt. The tale revolves around the enigmatic figure of Pharaoh Sesostris, whose historicity remains uncertain, as modern historians speculate that the stories attributed to him might be a blend of different pharaohs, including Ramses the Great and Seti I. As a result, we don't know exactly who the following story is actually attributed to, but we had to share it because, well, you'll see. According to the legend, Sesostris was a highly self-assured military commander driven by an insatiable thirst for battle. He allegedly exhibited open disdain for adversaries whom he deemed weak in combat, while lauding those he believed fought valiantly and honorably. The curious aspect of this tale is the peculiar way in which the pharaoh is said to have responded to cities that surrendered easily or put up feeble resistance. It is claimed that Pharaoh Sesostris ordered the erection of statues in the heart of these conquered cities, bearing a distinctive and symbolic feature, a representation of a female genitalia, interpreted as a means of implying that the defeated city's army fought like women. 
It is essential to emphasize that the veracity of this anecdote is questionable, given that its primary source is the renowned yet often unreliable historian Herodotus. As responsible purveyors of historical knowledge, we present this tale with a cautious approach, recognizing the uncertainties surrounding its origins and authenticity. However, due to its fascinating and unconventional nature, we felt compelled to share this intriguing account, allowing you to contemplate the enigmatic character of Pharaoh Sesostris, whoever he might truly be in the annals of ancient Egypt. Tutankhamun ascended to the throne at a young age, nine or ten years old, and his decisions were heavily influenced by his advisors, particularly I, who was known for being a plotter, but we are unsure. During his reign, Tutankhamun focused on restoring Egypt to its pre-Amarna period, rebuilding temples and monuments, and changing his name to show his devotion to the gods. He married his half-sister, Ankesenamun, and they had two daughters who died in infancy. After Tutankhamun's death, Ankesenamun may have sought a foreign alliance through marriage, but the prince sent for her died under mysterious circumstances. Overall, Tutankhamun's reign was relatively unremarkable but his legacy would be forever changed thousands of years later with the discovery of his tomb in the Valley of the Kings by Howard Carter. It is said that Tutankhamun's golden coffin was buried in a tomb in the Valley of the Kings, surrounded by 5,000 priceless treasures. These ranged from canopic jars that contained his organs to his dazzling footwear, some of which depicted paintings of his enemies on the soles. So everywhere the king went, he trampled all over his foes. King Tut's coffin was an intricate three-piece sarcophagus of which the outermost was in red quartzite and the innermost was made of solid gold, weighing around 240 pounds. That's as heavy as a giant panda. It would be worth well over one million pounds in today's currency. Tutankhamun's health, which was plagued by various genetic abnormalities and conditions such as a club foot and a degenerative bone disease. The theories surrounding his cause of death are also explored, with the most prevalent theory being that he died from malaria. Ramses II, widely regarded as one of ancient Egypt's greatest rulers, earned the title Ramses the Great from his subjects due to the numerous monuments constructed in his honor. Following an illustrious 96-year reign as pharaoh, Ramses might have anticipated spending eternity in tranquility, enclosed in a splendid gold coffin. However, Fate had different plans as museums across the world sought to showcase his remarkable legacy. As if that wasn't enough, in 1974, our dear Pharaoh's age was catching up with him. No surprise there, considering he was literally older than time itself. So they whisked him off to a Paris lab to give him a good old-fashioned makeover. Yep, even mummies need some pampering once in a while. Now you'd think they'd respect the guy's legacy, but nope. When they packed him up for the trip, they slapped on an official Egyptian passport. Can you imagine the customs officer's face when they saw a mummy with an ID? Classic! The passport read, Name, Ramses II, age 3, 000, 000 plus years, and counting. Occupation, King, yes, he's dead, duh. Next time you visit a museum, keep an eye out for Ramses, the forever jet-setting pharaoh. Who knew that ruling a kingdom could be so bizarre and quirky? These pharaohs were the original examples, strutting around with their golden scepters and wacky antics. And so, we leave behind the land of sand and pyramids, but take with us the memories of the furriest invasion, the pharaoh with a sun disk on his head, the honey-covered slaves, the fake beards, and the passport-wielding mummies. Long live the pharaohs and their hilariously bizarre antics, which pharaoh's story intrigued you the most and why? Let us know in the comment section. Until we meet again, may the spirit of the pharaohs live on in the hearts of all who seek to uncover the mysteries of our shared human heritage.